Welcome, everybody, to this latest edition of the Black Jack Pack. I am your host, the Rated R himself, Ryan, with our amazing panelists. We've got none other than Isaac, Prime, and Coom himself, Rudy the Playmaker, and Retro Parse. How is everybody doing today? We're doing good, man. I'm tired, man. <laughs> it's, been <a> full, <laughs> it's been a full day's work, bro. I am tired. Playmaker, how about you? Yeah. yeah, you know, I'm I'm just happy, you know. It's mm-hmm. good to see all my guys. You know, we're we're in for an, a semi interesting discussion today. Yes, sir. Uh, all right. right, lead us off, man. All right, perfect. I will lead you guys on. And today we're going to be talking about one of the most interesting places in the world, a place that I think most of you guys have already been to, ladies and gentlemen, the United States state of Florida. So it's been catching a lot of flack on the news lately (laughs) for everything related to COVID. Already, let's begin by being honest. Florida has always gotten the brunt of the stick for being the wild state. But according to yesterday's COVID cases, and this is as, you know, as recent as June 20th, 4,049 cases in a single day. When the the entire state had gone down to a low of, and I'm not lying, 306 cases. At that point, they're trying to catch it. Yeah, they went. Like, <laughs> at this point, at this point, I don't know what's going on in Florida. Like, I think, I'm a, I, I think Isaac should start us off because um, when you said Florida, his eyes widened up. So we got to hear about <laughs> how, he, how he feels in Florida. <laughs> I mean, I, I I know Florida. I used to be in Florida a lot, like when my brother was there. Like we used to go to Florida, so I know how Florida people move. These Florida people, like they move like they have like no remorse for nothing. So I'm not surprised when I'm always seeing or hearing these cases keep going up and up and up. And this is the issue with Florida, okay? They're a state where this is what they eat and breathe outside, water, sand, beach, ladies, you know, all that stuff. So for you to ask them to stay inside and not leave the house is like, you know, crack, you know? And they, they're, they're scratching, like, you have to get out, you know? So the thing is, is that you need to... I don't know, like, give them some type of medication to just not come out and stay inside. And no, I just feel like it's such a high risk for sports to be happening in a state like Florida right now, you know? So they, they, they got to yeah. really pause in sports because it's, it's, not, it's not looking good in Florida. I feel like everywhere else is looking really good, but Florida is the only state where – Nothing's getting better. It's just getting even worse, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know what's crazy? I was supposed to be in Florida next week. So I was supposed to to, to be there from the 1st to the 6th of July. So yeah, this is hurting my heart. He would have caught COVID in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I yeah. was on the beach. Especially mm. knowing, knowing how Playmaker a... loves to be on the beach while he's on vacation. Oh, Lord, he lives on the beach, sleeps on the beach, mm-hmm. meets women on the beach, eats oh, on the beach. The high roll. Yeah, no, I know how it is. Honestly, like, it's, um, just the it's actually quite sad hearing how Florida is, man. Like, mm-hmm. I, I thought everybody would understand that this is a very serious situation that we're in. Unprecedented. We're in an unprecedented time. And I, for one, want to be able to tell my kids I survived it. <laughs> I was out there in the front line. I was fighting this thing. <laughs> Everything like I you're, had. You're, you're talking about like it's the war or something. Like after <laughs> World War II. Like, hey, uh, hey, like a veteran. Hey, hey, if my parents are going to go claim, you know, they lived during like Dr. King and Vietnam and and Ronald Reagan, I got claims on too. So I was there when Obama was in. <laughs> <laughs> I was Obama there was the first president. Trump, and I was there for COVID. You know? yeah, COVID, but, but black, on a serious black movement, note, everything. Um, I believe that Florida, given every, given that they deem sports an essential service and things like that, they're trying their best to 
kind of restart the economy. But I feel like ultimately it's just not going to work out. And you're seeing the repercussions of, of ignorance right now. Just thinking that the virus is not that much of a big deal. Because over in the States, right, governors make the calls, not the president. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just a plain ignorance on their part. And it's truly sad. Okay. I've got to put, I'm going to add my own perspective. I don't really do this in general, but like I look at the American situation and even the Canadian situation, they're very similar, but very different in terms of the way the government works. You have the head of state that is the head of the state in charge of everybody. However, the states and provinces and territories within it operate individually and in their own ways to deal with it which isn't bad depending on who's in charge of said place. Look at BC, British Columbia had some of the highest cases for a good, you know, for a little while, but now you're just seeing like six cases today in British Columbia. British Columbia is scared of six cases compared to Ontario where you have, oh, guys, we're under 200 today for the, for the fifth straight day. Everybody let's celebrate. Florida is at 3,000. And they're not blinking. There's a problem. And it's a whole, and I think it's the system that's inherently the problem. And for them to say that sports is an essential service, that proves oh, a money where, grab. That, it's yeah, a money grab. Definitely. But it proves to me where their priorities lie. It's not with the people, but it's with how they're making money. If, if I was being smart, if, let's be frank and honest and smart. The smartest places to restart sports, in my opinion, if you're going to restart basketball, go basketball, hockey, um, go to Phoenix, go to Arizona. There are not that many people like Florida people, all right? And uh, actually, shoot, I give us hockey. Give Ontario hockey. We've got hockey arenas everywhere in the dang province. <laughs> not Florida. Not Florida. Florida's the last place I would send people to go. Shoot, send them to New Mexico. There ain't no sports in New Mexico, but it seems more viable than Florida. I think I think um, if we really, really want sports to happen, because we all know it's like it's for the money and they're trying to make profits and stuff. Like I don't know. I think maybe they should have. They should do it in Ontario. Because I think we can use like the Hershey Center, we can use the Scotia Bank kind of thing to kind of do the games and stuff because it doesn't make sense to like I understand why they're doing it because of the specific um, facilities that they have. But if you think about it now, like imagine us, you know, we all play for, let's just throw teams out there like Lakers, right? Mm -hmm. And our families are going to be mad worried about even not for our safety, for their own safety, right? So it's like you're kind of putting people's lives in jeopardy to go to Florida. And I don't know if it's too late for them to change the locations, but if that's still the case, Florida is the best, like, the spot to be, then I think there's going to be a lot of players that's going to not want to play because if I remember correctly, they said you have like a deadline to decide if you want to mm-hmm. play or not. So I think it's going to be an interesting uh, league and especially if certain players that people are trying to see are not playing, then maybe a lot of people might not want to watch or get really involved because certain players aren't playing. And I mean, you know, you see the players that are protesting, you know, it's most of them are like um, franchise players that are doing it. So it's going to be kind of weird if they're not playing. Yeah, you know. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know what's crazy? is actually that Trevor Ariza situation. I don't know if y'all saw it. Yeah, I saw yeah. it today. Yeah, actually, I didn't so- get a chance to see it yet. Okay, so um, I mean, I I didn't read up a hundred percent on it, but my understanding of it is um, he's not going to play in the NBA restart, not because he has a problem with the restart, but because 
uh, a child custody situation where he's being granted a one month of uh, visitation rights with his son uh, because his uh, the, you know, the mother I, of his child won't let him do it. Or something along those genres. Like all everything, the information about it is very sketch, weird, very weird situation. But I don't know about you guys, but I got to give Trevor Ariza father of the year if he, if he does that. It proves to me where his priorities lie. Shoot, I want him to be the governor of Florida. I'll, I'll vote for him. I'll pick him. No, but I, I think it's important just, I mean, none of us here are fathers. I mean, we don't know, but none of, none of us know. here are fathers. I know I'm not. <laughs> I know myself. <laughs> I know my situation. Blake, still in the question. Blake, if you got, if you got to ask questions, I don't want to talk to your mother. I'm not talking to your mother about this. Right. You're going to deal that with her yourself. Listen, listen, one thing at a time. So, um, yeah, no, I just think it's, it's, first of all, good as a narrative, right, of, of just black men and fatherhood and just in, fatherhood just in general because I feel like there is a lot. And, like, Will Smith had a whole the small video about the fatherhood that was very, very poignant. But, like, I, it really brings up to a point, I think, um, all of us have had very interesting relationships with our fathers, but like the they're not perfect. And mm -hmm. I think if there's one thing about the fatherhood of paternal role that like we all seem to feel like it's like if I'm a father, I have to be perfect. Even if mom isn't perfect, the child will inherently like mom. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But me as a father, you gotta you like I gotta be perfect. I gotta be the perfect example. Right, I don't have a child, but I feel that way. I even feel that way about nieces and nephews that are growing up or my little cousins. I have to be the best possible role model because there's only so many things that I can do. Right, and I feel just in general, um, I I feel like especially the relationship with your father, it changes over time. Right, right. I feel like when you're a kid, there's more of an adoration towards them it's like especially like you know, you admire them right and as a adolescent there's more of a rebellion streak like you want to not necessarily best them but you want to be able to become your own man and then at some point between 20 and maybe 40 they end up respecting you and them you guys end up respecting each other both as men i i, I don't know right and then then you get the super weird part of your relationship where now, like, they want to be your friend, even though if you've had black parents, your whole life you've been told, I'm ain't not your, your friend. friend. I ain't your friend. <laughs> yeah, like, and then suddenly you're like 23, they're like, so what's going on with your life? I think we should be friends. Or let's be closer. And you're like, I spent my whole life hiding shit. Spent my whole life. I spent my whole life. I love you. <laughs> I love you. I truly do. information now. <laughs> I love you, I truly do, but I fear you more than I love you. Yeah. <laughs> I fear the repercussions. Now they, now they want to hear everything. They want to know what's good. No, so, and you know what thing is, it's like, talk to me. bro, and you know what's crazy about this? It's like, I spent the better part of my life hiding things from you. And now <laughs> it's just like, can you please give me this information willingly? And it's like, sir, um, mm. ma'am, this is not how a relationship works. No. <laughs> Why did you change the contract? To understand. Why did you change the contract without telling me? I needed a two weeks notice before you do this. Exactly. And it's such a weird transition. Because like especially at the age we are at now, now it's just like you let's say you start to have your own car, your own place, uh, you get your career going. You have a completely separate life from your parents. You know what I mean? You sign for your own stuff. You do your own business. You, you do this show. You do so many other things mm -hmm. that are completely devoid from your parents. Like, so now having a relationship with your parents is different because it's like you make money, they make money. You pay bills, they pay bills. Whatever. Like, and it's no longer before when you're kids. Like, I pay the bills, but now I pay the bills too. 
or I pay my own bills. You know what I mean? So like now you're it's in a different like, household if you can say that word, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that sentence. I, I pay I pay I pay what I pay, but don't let that sentence come out of my mouth. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like no, but it's always I don't know what you mean but I there's always so many there's so much tension in that dynamic. Yeah. Especially when you want, you need it to change at some point, right? Because I feel like mm. all of us, like at a certain point, and I feel like it's something about male dynamics where it's it's good to have the love and the appreciation and the admiration of your friends and your your peers and your brothers and and right. other males, but it's a respect, right? Mm-hmm. At some point, you gotta respect me as a man. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. That's, that's that's true. No, right? I'll, so, I'll tell cool. you guys. I'll tell you guys a story of mine, all right? And it was the first time I think I realized that my dad, my father, like my father may or may not respect me. Um, and I was in the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was in the car. I was, I, I just turned 20. And I just started a relationship with my, with my current girlfriend, actually. We we're in the car. And I tell him, hey, dad, I've got a girlfriend. And he's just quiet. He's just quiet. He's driving. And he's mm-hmm. just like, you like her? I'm like, yeah, I like her a lot. She's like, good. And it's just like, there was this simple silence. We didn't need to say more. It was just there. And we're like, the respect was there. It's just like, okay, you got yourself a girl? Cool. Take care of her. I didn't need to say more or less about it. You know? And when I knew I had that respect, I'm just like, you know, I feel good. I feel good getting that respect from my, from my dad. Knowing that he respects my relationship. That that meant a lot to me. What's yeah, it no, called? I, um, I remember, um, I think it was like three, four years ago. Um, one time I came back home and it was mad late. It was like 10 o'clock. My dad called me. He said, like, yo, where are you? I need you to come home right now, right now. I'm like, okay, choo-choo, I'm less hustling home, getting home. I get to the crib. He's like, yo, I'm taking you out to Red Lobster. Let's go. I'm like, oh, okay, I ain't complaining. Let's go. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, we're eating, all you can eat shrimp, just me and him. All of a sudden, I was kind of like, wait a minute, where is everyone else? How come this Where's the setup? Where's the setup? Right? <laughs> right? So he's, he started talking to me. He's like, yeah, you know. Um, when you were 17, I told you, like, you know, you're a man now, you're gonna make choices as a man, you know. He's like, you know, remember, I crowned you, man, or whatever. Like, you know, I know now. wait, what? <laughs> yeah, when I, was seven, when I was 17, when I was 17, he's like, I crowned you now, man. And he did that to me, so I was like, bro, okay. bro, like, hey, don't, don't, don't mess around. That's a, like, I'm. And I mean, you were yeah. dubbed the Black yeah. Panther before anybody. Yeah. <laughs> hey, don't laugh. I got that too. Bro, oh, that's crazy. I first. First, first. Don't I laugh at us because we're men. Bro, I've never <laughs> heard that in my life. But, bro, yeah. yo, congrats to you. You got dubbed the night, fam. Let's go. Thank first, you. first. We got to do it to you. <laughs> Oh man! Ain't nobody did that to me, man. Ain't nobody. Uh, <laughs> you know I, I I got I got the whole sit down. I think it was eighteen mm-hmm. at the time. I was just like I just um, it was a time I almost thought that my dad would actually be proud of me for, or I guess he was, but he had his own funny way of showing it. I just mm-hmm. I went from um from getting like subpar marks in grade eleven to actually getting into UMT, and then you no, know, we're I'm sitting down with him and he's all like, "You're gonna go to university now." I was like, "Yeah." You're actually becoming a man, you know? Like in America, you'd be a man right now. I'm like, it's true. So it's like you gotta start making like better decisions because like you can't keep just acting like a kid and all that and you gotta go get your you gotta go, you know, level up. And like that was his way of telling me, like, you've done okay so far, but I need you to surpass this mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. surpass me type thing. So that's like that, that, how that I, tough you know, I got that. No, it's been tough. tough it's definitely tough. That tough love. That tough love. <laughs> it's been so tough. <laughs> uh-huh. But Man. but hold on, but hold on though. Yeah. When we were sitting down and we were talking at the restaurant, he was talking about yeah, you know, at the time I think it was like twenty two. He was like, yeah, you know, I know, like, uh, cause I I remember I used to bring a lot of girls around, like the apartment and stuff. 
So he was like, yeah, I know you're talking to girls now, blah, blah, blah. Like, I kind of hear it in the room, whatever. And the funny thing is, he was like, yeah, you know, um, if you ever want to talk to me or if you want to talk to Rudy's dad, you can talk to him, talk to me, you know, uh, anything you want to share. And I was like, oh, say a word, okay. And he's like, yeah, um, you know, I consider Rudy's dad, like, you know, a good friend. And, you know, if you want to talk to him, I want you to talk to him. And I'm like, all right, cool, cool, cool. And then he just started that conversation and just continued eating shrimps. So I guess that was my conversation with, you know, growing into being more of a man and taking responsibilities and stuff. No, it's I'm, crazy how we're talking about this right now because, like, we just had mm-hmm. Father's Day. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, and, like, yeah. all of us got, got our Father's gift. We were all kind of, like, there. You know, I hung out with my dad for for a while, um, got him a gift, and then, you know, we was grilling, so that's how we spent it. But, you know, it's kind of crazy to be talking about this on Father's Day. No, bro, you know, you know, two things. I know we're not fathers yet, or nah. some of us aren't sure. Of course um, not. <laughs> I am 100% bro, sure I, of I, my I situation. Sure. I know I, sure. I am <laughs> child. None of you guys. At this point no. in my life, I am yeah, child yeah. free, my guy. I am child free. I am willing to bet some money on this. <laughs> that wouldn't make sense to me. You go from being on house arrest with your parents to be on a house arrest with your kids. <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, I feel like you just love you. <laughs> when are you going to be free? <laughs> but I, get you, I get you like, you know, you love your life and you love your girl. And you love your son, your daughter that you have. And now you just want to take care of her. And I get that, man. Like, for me personally, I just want to bring, I want to be able to bring a life that I can take care of mm-hmm. um, for like, for sure, like no hiccups. I was about to ask this question, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, we're getting up there in age and my cousin. You're recently, getting up there in age. I'm chilling in my early 20s. Feels good. Ryan, I'm in my don't okay, want you the youngest. Relax, 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 relax again there. Age comes <laughs> for everybody. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so my cousin recently um, gave birth, actually, mm-hmm. um, to a beautiful baby boy, and um, just got me thinking, just more about this fatherhood stuff. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that you're really excited to do with your son or daughter, or is, and is there is something that you're very fearful about the whole fatherhood aspect in general? Mm-hmm. I think we should bring a round table around that. We'll, we'll, I'll finish that off, but because I have a few ideas about that part. Man, I, I the one thing I fear, like I say, so one thing I'm looking forward to is, mm. is is I can't wait for this. Honestly, I really, I really wish for it to happen. Um, mm. Like waking up in the morning and I'm gonna go get groceries real quick. I'm not gonna get it with the wife because she's gonna be like doing something or busy or whatever. And I grab mm. the keys, and my daughter hears and goes, "Oh, let me take a ride with you. I want to take a ride." Want to take a ride in the rocket ship? Let me go. Let me go. I'm like, yeah, yeah. She wants to go ahead and get some pulls in. Let's go outside and get some pulls in. <laughs> you see me on the road, bro. <laughs> You're gonna teach your daughter how to speed early. Yeah. I'm about to put it into third right now. <laughs> She's about to be a NASCAR racer. Oh your God, girl, so your girl is gonna be so a fun. Fast and the Furious 17. Yo, she's gonna <laughs> love. Cars. She's gonna know everything about cars. She's gonna love cars. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have a daughter, man. If I have a son, the same thing. You know, it's just gonna be good. Just like the one thing I'm fearful of, though. One thing I'm fearful of is going through that talk about like, like trying to find that gauge between hanging out with friends and being part of the crews and like learning which crew you want to be part of and still maintaining that responsibility. Because to be honest with you, like for me personally, when I went through it, like. I had, I really, like, I had a really small margin of error. Mm -hmm. So for me, it wasn't too, too hard because I knew my, like, my parents were going to beat my ass (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) if they found out some crap that went down. Like, I I didn't, I couldn't afford for the cops to come bring me home because I did something and be like, I let them off with a warning. I couldn't afford to be caught Mm -hmm. up in school. Like unless the te- and the teachers come like oh he got into a fight and it's, and if I did get into a fight which I did I got into a couple fights in elementary I had to make sure I win so I didn't win 
man. You're get, I'm not him when you get home. Because you watch. Not because you got in a fight, but because you watch. <laughs> yeah, it's like because you watch. Bro. You don't understand. <laughs> right? That's what we go through as black people, bro. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, it's, it's so weird. If you, but like, you, like, you better, you better give an ass open. <laughs> And then you get one too. Like <laughs> it's real. It's real like that. Bro. When it comes when it comes like, to I, fighting, when it comes to fighting, my mom always told me this: don't start a fight. But if someone ropes you into a fight, you better finish the fight. You better finish. <laughs> it. You better you better, finish yeah. it better be so bad that like you're borderline. Like he he's never gonna fight again. Like he's never this even gonna exactly. look at you. Like he walks oh, the other yeah. way in the hallways. Right. He, he goes. The complete opposite way. He goes down the stairs once he sees you come up the stairs. That's the mm-hmm. one thing I'm scared of. Just, just teaching them that that bind, like, cause, mm-hmm. like, you know, I don't want them to grow up thinking that, cause I'm not gonna be like as harsh, but like, I'm not gonna be out there accepting the fact that my daughter is coming home at two o'clock in the morning, as a 16 year old, three nights in a row. Like, no. that's. Uh, <laughs> Okay, we're back. We're back now. We're back. Okay. Um, yeah, um, so, like, yeah, what, what are you looking forward to um, with uh, with parenthood? Like, what are you looking forward to with um, your kid? Uh, for, for me, um, the things I look forward to, if it's a boy, that uh, well, I'm not going to force it, but I would like him to love sports. Like, we can watch sports together, talk about sports. He can play sports, you know, see who's better, new school versus old school kind of thing. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, be sick and just be like really cool. Like, I want to be like, I want to be a dis- like have discipline, but be a really cool parent. Um, and definitely, I want my kids to like find themselves to be who they are. Like, I don't want them to be like, Well, I did this, I did that, you gotta do this, whatever you have a passion for. Like, I want you to do it, have fun with it, just be who you are as a person. Um, the, the things that I worry about, um, like you mentioned the whole discipline aspect, because nowadays discipline is different. When we were Riley's age, there was yeah. no speaking. It's come here and get licks. Even <laughs> at my old church in the West End African church, the, any aunties and uncles that know you, you do something, you get licks in the classroom. Like no one plays games and go home and get more licks. So now you got to, like, be different about it. You got to, like, kind of talk. You got to be... Yeah, like, there's a whole different aspect. You can't you can't give licks no more. Like, yeah, you can't give licks no more because now kids are, have no problem calling. I know when I was younger, I was scared to go to the phone and call anybody. Nope. You know, I was, I was you were scared. Now it's like, oh, yeah, well, you know, I'm about to go cut child services. Like, damn, like, y'all kids be growing chess all of a sudden. But yeah. um, but when it comes to the girl, like that's, that's something that I would want my wife to discipline and handle her, right? I would do the talking, but if she wants to lay, like, do the disciplining, like physically, she oh, would be oh. the one I would want to do that. Like, I would stay away from that. That's Boys, I would. I don't mind being the one that's kind of you know on them type thing because I want them to understand that. You know, um, it's never right for no man to hit you. So I don't want to hit. I'll just yell at you and then let your mama hit you. It's the woman that's hitting you, not me. So. All right, yo, Ryan, that's, that's let's hear your question. young, your young behind. Tell us what you're gonna do with your kids, man. <laughs> um, when I become he's he's a father, there, Ryan's up there. if and when <laughs> he's, 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 he's there. getting up there, right? he's getting up there. Don't worry, Ryan. You know, we're we're gonna talk about it. Don't you be I am good where <laughs> I'm at. Leave me alone <laughs> in my youth. Don't worry about me, ahead, bunch of geezers. Um, see, when I'm the one thing I want, and I know it already because of the way that i treat my my like my nieces and my cousins yeah it's cutting 
I am so sorry about that. My connection is really weird. Um, but the one thing no, I know you're, you're, you're cutting <laughs> get, it, off, um, get off. Cutting Yo, it player, off. you have to take over for him, man. He, he didn't have a response right now. Okay, he's back. He's back. Okay. All right. The one thing that I would want, really, truly, like from my perspective, is I would want knowing how I treat my my female cousins. I would want. I know that I'm a girl dad. I'm going to be a girl dad. I know that. I'm going to push for them to reach the stars. I'm going to push my daughters to like be the greatest of all time at whatever they decide to be. All right. If my girl, if my daughter decides I'm going to be the greatest uh, horseback rider of all time or the greatest veterinarian of all time, shoot, I'm going to be there at every single thing. There is no question. And everybody that knows me knows that that's facts. And same thing with my guy. No I'm letting you know I'm not, your kids are not bringing any horses. Or or dogs in my house. I'm letting you know. You can you can come through if you want to bring a horse to mine. You can bring it. Like nah, I want them to wait a minute. Do the my same uncle, things I did. Nah, 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 you keep that shit over there. <laughs> my, my kids got to learn horseback riding, fencing, nah, chess. See? The same things I learned, bro. Same things. Uh, no, but like, got you though. everything else, I'm good. But horses, plus, got you going. You got languages. <laughs> <laughs> if my child decides to learn Mandarin, if my child mm -hmm. wants to learn Mandarin, shoot, my child gonna learn Mandarin. But I hope to teach them the work ethic, no matter boy, girl, whatever. I hope to yeah. teach them the work ethic that my dad taught me. That's one thing. Like, my work ethic really would tell you, like, I'm the person who sleeps at 3 a.m. and I'm awake at 8 a.m already writing like i'm writing uh, a bunch of different projects right now like this is not the only thing that i'm doing but i know my girl sometimes she looks at me she's just like ryan have you eaten today and i'm like no and what have you been doing i've been working all day shoot i don't know about you oh who else is bringing them like i'm bringing in money i'm bringing in the work so <laughs> so but i hope to give them that but i hope like the one, my one fear is to not be emotionally disconnected from my kids. Cause I know like me, I can also like emotionally disconnect from people and just look at you like, you don't matter to me. I know I have that ability and I want my mm -hmm. kids to feel like they're able to connect with me emotionally, talk to me about stuff in their lives. Like I know if, you know, I know that when my, when my kids get to like nine, 10, and they're going to want to talk to me about this stuff, you know? Like, if they're going to talk to me about boys or girls in their lives, like, Rudy knows. Rudy knows. I will definitely give them advice. But just don't bring the boy home. If my girl dates a guy, look, just don't bring the boy home until you're 18. If you're before 18 and you bring this boy home, acknowledge that I will be there with a weapon of my choosing. I just want to have that more. <laughs> and, more. Just say, and the I same just want to be a bad boy's too situation. <laughs> And like, and I'm gonna do fair? the same thing, and I'm gonna do the same thing to my boys. Mm -hmm. If my boys bring a girl home before they're 18, yo, they're getting straight. Like, I'm going to come with a weapon because I don't want girl. none of that in my house. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, but I'm telling for the girl, I'm telling, I'm, yo, I'm telling my wife, yo, you better handle that girl. Yeah, <laughs> better, better handle. But scare her down. Put the Facts. fear of God in her. Because mm -hmm. I'm putting the fear of God into all the boys. Exactly. <laughs> That's how you're doing. The girls can Listen, that. I'm telling people I don't want to be a grandfather before it's time. I'm letting y'all know. Straight up. Yo. Baby, Give it, giving her the uh the Dominic Toretto, yo. You break her heart, I break mm -hmm. your neck. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. Like to me, it's just like I know that I'm not a violent person. But I will definitely threaten you and be like, yo, if you're going to be part of this family, yo, you better strap up. And I'll tell, I'll tell the boy, if I ever, like, the boy, I'm going to test the boy physically. I'm going to test him. I'll be like, okay, you know oh, what? You, you want to date my daughter? Cool. Hold up. Yeah, I'm going to leave the room, come back, basketball shorts on, I have the J's on. You'll see me with, uh, with the whole shirt and be like, so you're gonna a be basketball a one -on -one situation? It's going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. If you beat me one-on-one, -on -one, okay, then we'll talk. Then we'll talk. If you can't, I'm not taking all the risks. <laughs> I will post this boy up, especially if this boy's shorter than me. Oh, 
I'm just pulling the boy. Just like, give me the ball. Barbecue chicken. Ah, pow, pow. <laughs> I'm an elbow in two. Back. I will post this boy up. Wow. I'm gonna pray and, to you the guy's not six eight, bro. I pray he's not six eight. If he's six eight, I'm if he's six eight, I'm running. It's one of the only reasons I'm working out. <laughs> only reason yeah, I'm working out today is if he's six eight. Let's do some chess. <laughs> if he's six eight, six eight, we're playing chess. Maybe shooting some archery. Um, <laughs> wow, see, parts they're mixing it up now. Yeah, they're mixing it up right now. I, I would never. I mean, I don't. I'm confident. My um, that's an unfortunate situation, but we'll be playing chess. Um, yeah, uh, and or we'll be or we'll be playing dominoes. Playing and, backgammon. Bad guy, man, dominoes. Good. If he's Jamaican, he's about to get your ass whooped. Jamaican, he's about to play him in dominoes. Look, look, the one thing that I know yeah. I'm good at. Look, we're not gonna have a rap battle, him and I, because if do, we're doing that, why not? You win that I mean, every time. I mean, you, you might as well. Everybody knows you spend bars, bro. <laughs> <laughs> look, you I do well better than. Up. I do better than Joe's if I go a stepfather than the stepfather. You're trying to come to my daughter, I'm going to come beat you all up. Make me look like Marco, like Mike Corleone. Understand that I do this and I do this for my own. Look, you're a child, son. Don't ever come to me because I'm God's son. Don't you understand? I even got a God's son. He got himself a Glock. You know, that's God's son. So, you know, if I come with him with bars like that, there is no game. He's got no shot. My girl going to be, my child going to be celibate for life. Okay? That's a sin. And my boy, too. My boy, too. Look. Man. I got to give the, I got to give them a chance to win. Shout out no, to the audience. That's how, that's how those, oh. those kids are going to come to Uncle Rudy. Yeah, One of the best shows crazy, we've had. Shout out. You guys just got a sneak peek of some <laughs> of the bars that MC Ryan be dropping and be writing in. Yo, take in how sick this episode is, yo. Damn. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, Don't. You know, hopefully, hopefully bro, I'll get I, you guys. This is my question. All What's right, up? fine. Close us off, dog. What, what, do, what are you really fearful of? Mm -hmm. No, no. What I'm most excited of Hopefully, I have a few things I'm fearful of, but the one thing that I, like, I'm just excited of this, like, I don't know, kind of being friends with my kids, mm -hmm. and, you know, not just, not just, like, basketball and stuff, like, books he's reading, I, like, I really hope, and this goes into my fears, I really hope that I get to be a source of wisdom and advice for my son, you know what I mean? Like, I, that's what I really hope. That I can really be helpful and instrumental in his life and making his life better. Mm -hmm. um, I also hope that I'm able to set up expectations that he'll be able to meet, but in his own way. Mm -hmm. um, fearful. I'm fearful of one thing, and it might sound ridiculous, but I've just seen it in parents and people I know. I'm I'm afraid that I won't like my kid. Like you <laughs> love them, but you know. If, it's like if you have the choice to hang out with them, maybe not really. There. That's <laughs> Isaac. <laughs> That's Isaac. And this is why your kids are coming to Uncle Ryan. I'm I, I'm cool with all the kids. No, no, Don't worry, no, Ryan. To me. No, but Ryan, you know there's a difference. Like the thing is, I'm not saying this. I won't like my kids. I, I, like if you love the, it's like you love the, you love them. But it's just like it's like there's a difference. Like you love them. But there's certain parts of the personality that are like, mm, I don't think I really like that. You know what I mean? Wow. I mean, no child is perfect. You, you let him know. Bad. You let him know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, no. I agree, you, with, I I agree with Isaac know. on that one. I agree with Isaac you got on that You let him know. Yo, you, no, no. I'm going to tell him you got that from your mom's side. Because we don't do that. <laughs> this classic answer, bro. Oh, my God. The classic Yo, answer. Classic. Laugh. Classic. No, I'm, I mean, and I, mean, I bet you Rudy's gonna be, Rudy is Rudy's petty. Gonna be one of those parents. Yeah. Rudy's one of those parents where things are going well, you got it from me. When things are shit in the bed, <laughs> no, Rudy is gonna be that parent. Rudy is gonna be that parent when he's gonna act to ask ask their, his child. 
who's the fair, who's your, the greatest boxer of all time? The child's like, Floyd Mayweather Jr. He's just like, that's not my kid. That's not my kid. How dare you say another name that's not Mike Tyson or Muhammad mm-hmm. Ali? Get out of here. Get out of here. Don't watch me anymore. <laughs> that's Rudy. Oh, like, right? Like, no, but, like, I just hope, like, like, because I have, m- my brother knows this, but one of my dad's friends, she, we were just having a normal conversation, and they had confided in me, and they're like, mm-hmm. I love my child, I love them, but I don't like the person she is becoming, or I don't like her right now. I love them, and I've liked them throughout her life, but the certain things that she is doing are detrimental to her and to the way that she should be living her life that I don't like and I, it, it's, I'm starting to dislike her because she's becoming a terrible influence on my other children. Mm. So it's stuff like that. When you hear stuff like that from, uh, from parents, mm. like, it, like it hits you because you're like, bro, it, yeah, you raise a whole person and it's like, whoa, there's no guarantee you like them. And my mom even said that, like, because there's, uh, there's a saying in Africa, uh, in, in our language, so, Mubutaka um, Mwana, so meaning you you give birth, you give birth to, to the, the child, child but you don't give birth to the heart. heart right so who like you can raise the child love the child whatever but who ultimately the child decides to be is it's not even up to you really right so i think that's where that stems from mm-hmm. but, um and, but i hope to like honestly like i'm t- i'm i'm saying shut up my child likes the ballet I'm not saying that I won't go. I'm just saying I'm not staying awake the whole time. <laughs> um, <laughs> right? But like, yeah, just say it. Oh, no, like, no, no, just, no, no. You guys are saying this right now, but you know, at every like Christmas concert at school, like you see parents there, you're like, yo, I can't believe I missed time <laughs> off work. Well, I'm here until 9 p.m. I saw my child up there for five minutes, but I'm here the whole time. No, I'll be honest. Like, I'm that I'm that parent who will be there at every game, everything. But I just hope that basketball the kid makes game. it interesting. Bas- Rudy will be there at every yeah, basketball right. game. No, I'm there. I'm there. Pars- I'm there. Pars- and I, I'm, we'll be the you parents that you'll find. You, we'll be the parents that you'll find at bowling tournaments, <laughs> baseball it's games. Funny, guys, I say that, like, my, my whole life um, – like my parents didn't really go to my basketball games. They didn't. My parents they did. Didn't, they didn't, my parents they didn't go to my them. soccer games. They only went to my to my chess tournaments. And even and even then, once they started seeing me do well, it was, mm. they started picking which tournaments to go to. Like they didn't even go <laughs> to the regional tournament because like Parks is gonna win. We'll just uh, go to the provincial one. Yeah. They don't want to see you win. They want to see if you can maybe win. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing about like oh, like black parenthood that I would like to say. At least Africans, it's like you get an A. Why don't you get an A plus? You get an A plus. Why don't you? Why don't you uh, get one hundred thirty percent? It's like, sir. You know how hard it is. It's in the word. <laughs> no, this, this, so, it's never good enough. Hundred percent is right. not good enough. No, so the I, teachers I, at a young age, as, as as black people, the teachers at a young age, that, that everything we do is only going to be subpar, right, to our other um, predecessors and sorry to our other um, classmates. Um, you know, classmates. I don't yeah. think. No, no. I think they want us to. They're inculcating in us the the thing that you have to work harder to get. Like you have to work twice as hard to get half as much. Yeah, yeah, and it's right? true. So, so now, so you are already like, if you want this. Hundred thousand dollar a year lifestyle plus whatever. Know that you're going to be working two, three times, four times as harder as somebody else, right? That is not black. So I understand that. I truly that do. Is there, but then, but the thing <clears> is, <throat> I don't know. It's just the whole lack of positive reinforcement is something that is definitely lacking because some kids are better like in something i was learning about just i was learning about how to learn and it's like just part of reinforcement sometimes for certain people it's completely different than negative reinforcement or uh like and you have to know your child in order to motivate them like i feel like a lot of the parents role especially as the child gets older instead of being just a disciplinarian or whatever if you kind of go from a 
that to even just being a coach, mm -hmm. a, a, a friend, you know what I mean? So that dynamic is important, but like, I feel like you have had to have built that dynamic dynamic from the beginning, right? Cause I feel like your child has to be able to trust you from the beginning, mm -hmm. right? If dad says he's going to be here and come take me to Disneyland, I have to go ahead and take him to Disneyland because that sort of stuff is actually proven. Like if you have parents that parents that are not that, uh, that you can trust in, not only will you be more trusting and optimistic in the world, but you'll actually be able to delay gratification and, and be able to actually produce more because you're not in a, I can, I'm not sure if I'll get something else tomorrow mindset. So mm -hmm. you are, so you can trust what people say and you can uh, make sure that what your words actually mean. So it's like, if I need to set that example from the beginning of my child being able to trust me and I'm being able to trust my child later on, right? But if you don't build that dynamic, you're always going to be in the dynamic where if I can't trust what my parents say, or I can't trust 100%, I'm going to sneak out whatever. There's a difference between them sneaking out and lying to you because they're just being teenagers and them sneaking out and lying to you because that's how they think the world operates. Mm. Yeah, that's totally understandable. And I, and I really do appreciate the fact that we've had this, this amazing episode where we talked about Florida, fatherhood, and bars. Bars provided by yours truly. Um, but yeah, here we are at the end of our episode. Um, I am so thankful for all of our pet analysts. We've got Isaac Prime and Coom himself, Rudy the Playmaker, Pars Retro, and you know who I am, Ryan the Rated R. Like, share, and subscribe in the video below. We hope that you guys all enjoy this latest episode of the Black Jack Pack. We'll see you later when the Aces come back. Talk to y'all later. Peace, everybody. Peace out. Splash.